what is the thing that's been on repeat for you every single morning to help program your subconscious mind in your favor? Is there a thing you say? Is there a mantra? Is there a meditation? Is there a practice that helps reprogram in a positive way? I have a gold card. Carry a gold card with me all the time. My goal's on the card. I touch that. When, I, when you have a goal and you write your goal, you, you paint a picture with words. Your goal is a picture in your mind. And you paint the picture with words. When you're writing it, you impregnate it into a group of cells in your brain. When I carry this in my pocket, when I touch it, a sensory factor touches affected. It's a light message that goes flying through my body, and it resonates with those cells in my brain, and the picture comes on the screen in my mind. This is a ritual. I've been doing this since 1961. Wow. Um, what, what, what's on your goal card before I get to the next thing? I want to do $100 million in business. Wow. We don't do that now. I'm doing it in here. Mm -hmm. But physically, I haven't got there. Um, this is Sandy's goal, and it's my goal, and we both got the card signed. It's written in present tense. Um, all your goals should be in present tense. The only thing you put a date on is you're guessing at the date. Mm. You don't know what the date is. Yeah. So what's what's the second the next thing you do to help reprogram I, your subconscious I write a, mind and your ten favorite? things I'm grateful for every morning. Mm. Yeah. You you read it. I write it, read it, write it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does gratitude do for someone? when they feel stuck, when they feel overwhelmed, stressed, their goals aren't happening fast enough? Well, gratitude is an, interest, an interesting question, the way you answer the question. In uh, The Science of Getting Rich, in Chapter 7, Wallace D. Waddles wrote the chapter on, on gratitude. And in it, he said, the entire process of mental adjustment and atonement can be summed up in one word, gratitude. The entire process of mental adjustment. If you're troubled, this some could and it could go wrong, uh, but you're troubled. You, you've got a big problem. You're just not quite sure how to solve, it, and it's bothering you. It might be something personal, or it could be business. Whenever you feel yourself troubled, that's a mental problem. The entire process of mental adjustment. You need a mental adjustment. Sit down, write out what you're grateful for. You'd be amazed what it does to you. The entire process of mental adjustment and atonement can be summed up in one word, gratitude. Gratitude hooks you up to your source of supply. It opens a channel for good to come into your life. You cannot feel bad when you're thinking of what you're grateful for. It's funny, problems just sort of melt, go away. <laughs> it's it's Absolutely. like some kind of mental magic. Mm-hmm. It's better than magic. I, well, there was a creative writer. I got a mental block on the guy's name, and I should remember it because it's such a great thing. He said, um, I've worked around magicians. If I work conventions periodically, they'll have, if there's a, a magician working at the convention too, they'll get me to work some kind of a trick with them. So he's got to tell a trick to somebody. So I'm the guy, and I, <laughs> I've learned all kinds of how these magnificent tricks work. And he said, when you learn how magic works, it's not magic anymore. Mm -hmm. But he said, when you learn how your mind works, it's real magic. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So what's, the, what's another thing that you do to help reprogram your subconscious mind? Um, I, I consciously think of how I can help people. If I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm in between particular tasks that I'm working on, I'll think of somebody I can do something for. I'm always thinking on how to help somebody else, you know? Um, Emerson said that the law of cause and effect is the law of laws. Uh, whatever you put out comes back. Well, if you go around mm -hmm. doing enough good, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen to you. It's going to be good. And that's really pretty well how I spend my life.
And I know, and I know, no one's perfect, uh, me included. And I know, even though you've studied this for so long, I'm sure you still have, uh, you know, missteps or challenges, or your mind goes back into a place of, you know, a, a, a negative way of thinking. What is the biggest challenge you face with today? Even though you've studied this, even though you put these things into practice, even though you're successful, what is that big challenge that you face, Bob? Um, I get caught up in the minutia and the the noise that's going on around us, you know, the negative um, news that we hear. I'll get caught up in it every now and then. And I know it's stupid and I shouldn't. And so when I realize what I'm doing, I'll get away from it. But I do it. Um, I've often mentioned if we just work at getting rid of our bad habits, some of our bad habits we don't want to get rid of, we enjoy them. You know? um, but that's really the secret, secret is replace a bad habit with something that's essentially the opposite. And you take a double jump ahead. Because you're not going to get rid of the bad one, you've added a good one. So you, you know. It's hard for people to change the way they feel because oh. they get I feel like they get trapped in it. They're like, yeah. no, this is how I'm feeling. It takes them days to get out of it until they go to sleep, wake up, and maybe that resets the programming because they got some sleep. I don't know, but I feel like, and I've been there many times in my past where I would hold on to things for weeks, months, and, and hold on to the negative feelings. So I get it. I've been there, but it's so much better when you can shift it faster or just be aware of it. And I'm not saying don't feel... Um, grief and sadness and anger and frustration. These are all feelings we, we probably should have a balance of feeling, but don't hold on to them. I feel yeah. like that's what hurts us in the long run when we hold it on, on to those feelings. Yeah. Because I'm sure you still feel angry and upset and let down and sad at times, right? You know, I don't get angry. That's good. I can't remember the last time I got angry. I may be not very pleased with people sometimes, but I, I don't get angry. <laughs> no, I really... You might be disappointed. I used, to, I used to get angry. I used to have a hell of a temper. I had red hair, too. <laughs> I think red hair <laughs> have bad tempers. They, that's what they say. Well, it was true with me. Um, I can't remember the last time I was angry. I just what do you decided think? it was a, a really silly waste of energy, you know? Mm. What do you think shifted for you in, in deciding that? Oh, well, there's no question about what shifted. It's the studying. You know, you study, if you study the right material, you're raising your level of awareness. And people that are angry all the time are on a pretty low vibration. They're, they're not really very with it, you know. So how long were you angry for in your life? How many, how many years did it take to, oh, well, until you finally was, said... 40, 50, 60, how old uh, were you? I was probably, I'd probably be 60. 60. Late, and and how, how young are you now, Bob? I'm 86. Yeah. You look great, man. I hope I look as healthy and young <laughs> as you at 86. Well, I'm still going strong. I have no intentions of slowing down. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's 60. When I 60, say I haven't been like angry started... for a long time, probably, you know, it was probably up around 60 when I, I think I eliminated it, you know, as I was going along. And I realized, I think I got to the point where I realized just how silly it is to get angry. And you start to see other people getting angry. You think, why are you doing that? You know, they feel justified. Where do you, yeah. yeah. Where do you think you'd be if you let go of anger at 40? Where do you think you'd be in your life now? Further ahead than I am. Really? I don't really know where, but oh, yes. There's a tremendous amount of energy that's wasted in anger. It's a dumb waste of why, energy. Why do you think we get angry? We don't learn to control what is in the, What is in our mind? You know, mm. if a person would take, do you have a little book, As a Man Thinketh? I've had it before, but I, I, I think you actually sent me one. But I, I might have given well, I'm gonna one send a you copy another. away. I'm, I'm going to send you another. Yeah, yeah. Scratch. I might have it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, if you take the last chapter, and as a man thinketh, it's on serenity. And you start reading that, and you read it every day. If you wrote it out every day, 
I often have people write it every day for 90 days. It changes your life. Um, it starts off, calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It's the result of long and uh, patient effort in self-control. You see, anger is when we're not in control of ourselves. We're letting something outside take over. You're letting another person or a situation, maybe a flat tire, control your being. You know, the tire's flat, so the tire's flat, so what the hell? Get, get it fixed, you know? Um, but we let, we let stuff control us. And we've got to stay in control. 